and welcome to Giant Mess, a sloppy sports and entertainment talk show. It covers a little bit of everything, from the New York football giants to the New York baseball Mets, movie reviews, TV show recaps and reactions, and a whole bunch of life stories with life lessons that I'll make you go. Mm-hmm. Toasted by a giant mess, that's me, the real Cinch Neil Lynch. I'm an Irish Italian American who graduated from a Catholic high school but isn't Catholic. Then I earned a couple of overpriced degrees from an overpriced university that's known for producing doctors and lacrosse players. And spoiler alert, I didn't become either of those things. You can leave a voicemail, 862-248-1986. You can also subscribe to Giant Mess on YouTube, youtube.com slash real cinch, Neil Lynch, or Giant Mess. One of those three should work. Go to the blog, neillynch.com. And uh, I'm, on, I'm on the socials, dude. Real Cinch on Instagram and Twitter. Facebook.com slash Giant Mess. And uh, make sure you subscribe to, to this here pod on uh, Apple, Spotify, or my new fave, Amazon Music. On this episode of Giant Mess, New York Mets, a lot of rumors circulating, a lot of speculation about free agency and trades. What do I think about the potential Raphael Devers trade? That's been floating around. Hmm. Interesting. Mets have been in contact with the Tampa Bay Rays about pitching. Oh no. Well, get my thoughts on that. We'll also review MLBTradeRumors.com uh, released their predictions for free agents, uh, top 50 free agents, I believe. And there's a bunch of uh, targets on there. You know, both Mets that are now free agents and free agents that could be Mets. So we'll look at their predictions and. and, and uh, See what I like, what I don't like, what I agree with, what I don't agree with. And then there's a few arms for the Mets bullpen that could help to pave the way for our world-renowned, newly re-signed Edwin Diaz. Let's talk about the club picking up the option on Daniel Vogelback, re-signing Carlos Carrasco, Chris Bassett declining his his qualifying offer, Tagon, (laughs) Tagon. Tay Juan Walker declining his option. A lot of movement, a lot of activity on the hot stove. It's warming up, y'all. Let's talk Mets. The hot stove is heating up. He's heating up. Very hot right now. A lot, a lot, uh, a lot of proposals being thrown around. First one of which we'll talk about is uh, a Raphael Devers trade. Um, the Red Sox offered Devers a contract slightly above the 10-year, $212 million deal that Austin Riley got from the Braves. But Devers is seeking more than $300 million in extension. You know, Cohen has said before, he's not going to spend like a drunken sailor. He's going to take calculated risk. Francisco Lindor, the trade and signing was, that was his big splurge. He's not going to big splurge all over the place, you know, for every player. But he felt like that was a, the best investment at shortstop. He somewhat similar situation with Max Scherzer, much more short, shorter term. Um, but the highest AAV of all time, I think, forty some odd million dollars a year, uh, which now Degrom is looking for. So he's got a lot in the air. Just signed, re-signed Edwin De- Diaz, five years, one hundred two million. So he invested a lot there. You're gonna try and keep Nimmo, I believe. Um, there's like rumors now that he might go to the Yankees, which I just cannot see for the life of me. It's like, well, maybe on the on the front of like he won't grow facial hair, like that's where I see him being a fit with the Yankees. But other than that, it's like. Yankees, dude. I just don't see it. So, but he's gonna be in that five-year, hundred and fifteen, twenty million dollar range. I mean, there's only so much money to go around, and you you have a third baseman who is adequate, slightly above average, and Eduardo Escobar. Um, so you know, but Devers is like what twenty mid twenties, twenty four, twenty five. Is this your Francisco Lindor signing two point oh? So you say, you know what? We believe in Devers. We think he's the future. That locking up that side of the line, of the uh, infield for several years, 10 years, several years, seven to 10 years would be phenomenal, would be, would be great. And uh, so in that respect, I think, but you have a lot of contracts coming up. I, you know, it's like we're, I think we're already exceeding the luxury tax, which has its you know, consequences. So do we really just want to go way past, <laughs> blow past the luxury tax, and then you really um, hamper our chances of signing some of the homegrown stars? You know, Alonzo, you got to think about him coming down the pike. McNeil, maybe not so much. I know he just won the Silver Slugger, but is that someone that you're going to pour a lot of money into, knowing that um, 
he is older than Devers. You know, you lose Nimo, maybe you sign Conforto. There's still judges in the mix, so and Rodon, and there's a lot of big names with big price tags attached to it. The sense I get from Cohen is and Epler is they like well, Epler specifically is in Buck. They kind of like the roster that they have. And so I don't know that they want to make a big, that big a splash. So if they do uh, make any moves in this offseason, it does feel like maybe it's just Devers and that's that. Because I don't see them going, oh, oh, we're going to trade for Devers and then we're going to sign Judge and keep Nimmo. Like, what? I know he's rich, but like, <laughs> just, I don't, I can't fathom that. Um, that being said, though, it's like a would you rather. Would you rather trade for and sign Devers to an extension $300 million over 10 years, I guess it is now, 10 years, which would put him at age like, what, 34, 35, I think, by the time it's all done. Same with Lindor, though. He's going to be in his mid to late 30s when that contract's up. So it's like you're you're signing him to these 10-year contracts knowing that the first five are probably where you need to get things done. You know, you need to bring in a couple chips. Because those last five are going to be pretty brutal, so it's like you know, do you want to do you want to have multiple guys on your roster where the second half of the contract is going to suck? Do you really want that? I don't know. I mean, those first five years that will be freaking electric. So I'm kind of talking myself into the deal, but I don't know the, all the necessary financials. It just on on the surface level, not seeing their books, it just feels like they already did that with Lindor. They can't do it again with Devers. But if they could, ooh. so like maybe it's a case of you package Escobar and a, pro, a couple few prospects and yeah. So you know, it's gonna be costly, but is it worth it? Kind of think it is. We've also been in talks with the Rays. The Rays are uh, were I guess the deadline was yesterday, the fifteenth, and they were trying to complete several trades. I didn't see much in terms of trades from them. Um, teams must add players to their forty-man rosters before that deadline if they want to protect players who would otherwise be eligible for selection in the Rule Five Draft. So obviously, they must have had a bunch of players that um, they wanted to. Uh, they didn't want to lose in the Rule Five Draft, so that that would explain why they would want to uh, get rid of them. But I didn't. Let's see, the draft takes place on December 7th, but I didn't see many, many moves out of them. Maybe I missed something, but uh, there was uh, some talk about maybe Tyler Glasnow, that being uh, of interest to the Mets. And then they had a couple of younger arms uh, in the bullpen levers that would have been nice, but I don't think uh, probably a smart move. As I mentioned, we re-signed Edwin Diaz, five years, 102 million. Um, in my opinion, worth it. He was the best closer in baseball last year and minus some bumps in the road. And they were some pretty big ass bumps. He was looking like a pretty locked down closer for most of his tenure. You know, 2019 was obviously rough. Uh, we basically missed the playoffs because he blew a bunch of saves and leads. Um, 2020 is kind of like a, a mirage in a lot of ways. You know, like, uh, what was it? I saw someone, was it Jack, Jolly Olive or Jack Olive, whatever, put up a graphic about how, uh, Dom Smith having like the franchise's highest whatever in 2020. It's like, what was 2020, dude? <laughs> it's like 60 games. It's like a third of the season. So, um, you know, how many times have you seen a guy ball out for like a third of the season and then just like disappear for the other two thirds? So I don't think there was supposed to be like an option on smith or something and I, I don't think it was picked up so it looks like uh dom smith's days are over with the mets and i know that upsets a lot of people and uh i'm upset i'm not heartbroken though i mean like he had flashes here and there and would i love for him to be a lifelong met where he contributes and makes and has big hits i think a lot of us thought that after the 2020 season you know there was, there was like comps to barry bonds for crying out loud and it was just like we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here so you know it sucks but you know i just think we have too many other options you know how much how much runway and leash are you going to give a guy basically i mean he's been in this system since 2017 i want to say that's so kind of like eh. um we picked up the option on volga back which i think a lot of people are agreeing with they like they like that move and i like it um i think even if he is not your starting dh it's a great bat to have off the the bench and it doesn't cost you that much um it's just interesting to me and i think i've said this in a previous episode that's just like the guy can garner and generate a lot of walks and base on balls but it's like that's not what we want <laughs> it's like it's great that you get on base but now we have, we have to like pinch hit for you or or pinch run for you or you you are for sure like not going to be able to score on a ball of the gap. <laughs> you know, it's like that's tough. So it's like we'd like to see more slugging 
if possible. The walks are good, but like when the majority of your on base is generated by walks, it's like, uh, so I'd love to see them. You know, I've said this, I'd love to see them complement that left handed DH bat with a right handed DH bat. And I, I guess that's what Darren Ruff was supposed to be, but I don't know that you can roll with Ruff again this year after what happened last year. I, I, I. That being said, I think when we acquired Jay Bruce in 2016 down the stretch, he like shit the bed. I, I don't think he was producing that well. But then 2017, uh, he turned it around and, and put up a, a pretty decent year. Resigned Carlos Carrasco. I don't know that I necessarily agree with this, but there there were some numbers floating around about Carrasco, some advanced stats, and I was like, hmm, all right. Well, I guess he is upper echelon when it comes to pitching, but still not crazy about you know the the average length of start it's still you know to me it's like i don't think that's going to get better <laughs> you know so uh but i've also seen and heard that that's like kind of the status quo for the major league baseball this day it's like if you can get to the fifth inning great that you're doing your job whereas you know before it was like if you can't get out of the fifth like you're not a starter now we're leaning towards oh well just give us four get us into the fifth and we'll take it from there it's like okay if that's the case, then great. We claim Taylor Sacido, a 29-year-old uh, left-hander from the, the Blue Jays. He held left-handed hitters to a 182 average and 33 appearances over the last two seasons. Hell yeah. Um, he spent some time in AAA with Buffalo, recorded a 2.37 ERA and a 13.3K per nine ratio in 20 games, striking out 28 in 19. And uh, decent numbers. In the minors across seven seasons, 38 and 20, 4.19 ERA. Um, you know, I, I'm i all for lefties. You know, I think uh, people were a little disappointed in Jolie Rodriguez this year. So I think uh, it would be nice to get a lefty in the starting lineup and a starting rotation. And it would be nice to get a lefty, uh, the bullpen that we can rely on. So is that going to be like a major um, addition? No, it's like a nice to have. Like if he is able to prove himself in the minors and come up, like I think that would be nice. Uh, especially down the stretch. There's some talk that we're looking at Kodai Senga, a Japanese pitcher who spent 11 seasons in, uh, I, I don't understand Japanese baseball. <laughs> like there's two leagues. There's a Western league and a Pacific league. Apparently those are different or something. But over his 11 season career playing Japanese baseball, 104 and 51, 2.42 ERA, uh, 11 complete games, five shutouts. Is a WHIP of one point, almost 1.1. Gives up uh, 0.6 home runs per nine, 3.4 walks per nine, 10 strikeouts per nine. So he's like uh, almost three strikeouts to a walk. Can't argue with those numbers. So I don't envision him being like. I think it's probably if they don't resign Walker, maybe he's like a fifth starter. That could be coming in and, and do his job. So I'm not like head over heels in love with that because I don't know that there have been too many players from the Japanese league that come over and dominate. Um, Suzuki, obviously. Uh, Suzuki. <sighs> oh my God. My brain not working. <clears throat> but plenty of guys that have done well. But I've always been, and I've said this dating back to the, like when I was co-host on the tri-state sports guys, like there's something about the hype surrounding Japanese players that just that rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> Cause it's like, I think Matt Sui was another one for the Mets where it was like, this is our starting second baseman for the next 10 years. And then like he fizzled out in year two or something like that. Had an anal fissure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little bitter, but, uh, and then this is the one that I think is gonna, gonna hurt. A, a fair amount of the fan base. I don't know that I'm that incredibly hurt by it, but it's odds are Seth Lugo. Seth Lugo is probably not returning. And like I said in a previous episode, like I don't know that I'm that torn up about it. You know, I think that he's he's just lost something. You know, I just don't think he's quite where he was in previous seasons, where he was a, a almost locked down, shut down. You know, more dependable. I think there were a bunch of games this year and even last year where it was like you fully expected him to come in and get a one, two, three, or at least come out of it unscathed and he's given up a run. And it's like, it's not that detrimental. We end up winning the game because we had a two run lead, but it was like a little dicey when he came in. It was not, I, my confidence level dipped a fair amount over the past two seasons. So, you know, good luck. I think he wants to be a starter and maybe he goes on and he becomes a starter, uh, a good starter. 
an all-star starter. Um, and that just would be the way, wouldn't it? That's the LOL Mets. Like, that's just such a Mets thing to happen for him to go and do that. I mean, you look at, like, Rafael Montero. Couldn't, couldn't keep it together with the Mets. Struggled almost everywhere he went. And then goes to Astros, and I was like a, a you know, lockdown reliever. I don't know. Uh, so that's some of the trade rumors that are going around, some of the free agency news that's bubbling up. Um, MLBTradeRumors.com had some free agency predictions. I don't even know how old this article is, but um, I thought I'd run through that and just look at what they are thinking and then uh, give my thoughts. They have Carlos Rodon. Rodon? 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 To the Mets, which I like a lot. Five years, $150 million. Yes, he had some shoulder issues in the past. Uh, signed a, a fairly safe short-term deal uh, with the Giants, I believe, and uh, proved his worth. Um, I think he's only 29, 30 years old. I just, I've got a, I've got, um, I'm obsessed with getting a left-handed starter. <laughs> I just, this feels right. It looks like, you know, and I know this is stupid, but you look at like the 2000 Mets, you look at the 2015 Mets, you know, they had a lefty starter in the rotation. So I think that's the key to success as, as dumb a, a thought as that is. I'd love to have them. I think, uh, I think that's definitely worth it. A lot, uh, they had DeGrom going to the Rangers, which I don't get. I just don't get it. Um, and, and if he does sign with the Rangers, it was like, I don't know. What are you doing? Like, we're so close, dude. We're so close to winning a World Series. We're so close to, I mean, I've said this before, but like, we win a World Series with you in a Mets uniform. You're set for life, dude, in terms of like this area, <laughs> you know? You are a legend. I mean, he already is a legend, but like, it, it's just going to be soured when you go to the Rangers. Can you imagine if he goes to the Rangers and wins a World Series? Ugh. Um, so I think that sucks. I, I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know. It's like, I could understand if it was still the Will Ponds and the owners and Brody is still the GM and, you know, some uh, retread reject is our manager. But it's like, you have Buck Showalter who just won manager of the year, which I already thought he won manager of the year. <laughs> That's how foregone conclusion it was for me. I guess he was nominated and I just, I just, I didn't see nominated. I was just like, oh yeah, he won. I just took it for granted. And uh, so he wins the National League Manager of the Year. So you have the National League Manager of the Year. You have, uh, you have Scherzer that you, is like your cohort, your buddy. He can bounce ideas off of talk shop. I just, I don't get it. I mean, it, his legacy's tainted, isn't it? As far as like, as his Mets legacy, I mean, it's hard to argue with his Mets legacy. I think even if he does go to the Rangers, he probably still gets his number retired and gets in the Mets Hall of Fame and ring around or, or, or whatever. But it's just like, you stay with us, you sign, you win a World Series, you're getting the works, dude. A to Z, soup to nuts, like you're getting the statue, you're getting, you know, uh, like a, a, a pavilion, a street named after you. Like you're getting the Tom Seaver treatment times 10 while you're alive. Because I feel like we... We kind of, why did it take us so long to, to acknowledge and, and recognize Seaver? Well, it was weird. They have Nimmo going back to the Mets, or at least most of them. There was like four different prognosticators, and I think most of them had Nimmo going back to the Mets five years, 110 million, which I'll, well, I'm all for. You know, I think the only concern with him, previously it was his defense and his health, and now it's like we've seen he can play defense. Like he's, he's upped his game there. So it's mostly just a health issue. Can he stay healthy? And I think... You know, you get him a five-year, $110 million contract, he's going to figure it out. Chris Bassett declined, to, declined the qualifying offer of one year, $19.65 million. And uh, these these folks at MLBTradeRumors.com believe that he's going to go to the Twins, Dodgers, or Rangers. If the freaking Rangers get DeGrom and Bassett, ew, dude. Um, they project his uh, salary to be at least $60 million over three years. Since the start of 2019, he's thrown 546 innings with a 3.31 ERA, 23.1% strikeout rate, 6.7% walk rate, and 44.3% ground ball rate. His 9.3 foir in that time is 32nd among all pitchers in baseball. Those stats are great. Just something about them. It's just like, I don't, I guess he was realistically him and Taiwan. Taiwan were the most two most dependable pitchers in our rotation. Um, I did think he got into a, his fair 
share of jams. So, I mean, I could go either way on this. I don't think it's a huge loss if he, if he goes signs somewhere else. Um, I think it's cool if he if he signs back with us. But uh, just got a sour taste in my mouth after the last month. Walker, speaking of Taiwan Walker, he declined the player option. Um, the folks at MLB Trade Rumors think he's going to sign with the Padres, Orioles, or Giants, and not the Mets. Um, really hope he doesn't go to the Padres or the Giants. Have fun in Baltimore. I love Baltimore. My second city. My second home. So, yeah. I'd be cool with them going to Baltimore. Um, you know, and again, it goes back to average length per start, which, uh, not great, but apparently that's acceptable nowadays. So, the standard, not the deviation. Is that what they say? So, uh, you know, his starts are, it's like, good, 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 horrible. Good, good, good. So, although there was a, there was a weird stat that they threw out and I don't think I have it here, but like, he's actually better his third time through the lineup. It's like his second time stinks. It's either his first or his second time through the lineup stinks. I think with Carrasco, it's his first time around through the lineup. And then with Walker, it's typically like his second time through the lineup. He's not great. But then his third time through the lineup, which is typically in that fifth to sixth inning range, he's, he's, he's like awesome. I just don't. The volatility is not great for my mental health. Like, can we just have consistency one through three times in the lineup? And then uh, this one is intriguing to me. I wouldn't hate it. I don't think I love it, but I wouldn't hate it. Andrew Haney. Haney, three years, $42 million. A pair of shoulder injuries limited Haney to 72 and two-thirds innings, but he notched a 3.1 uh, ERA. Uh, still a little homer prone, but he he struck out thirty almost 36% of his opponents. Uh, and a very low walk rate, 6.1%. Um, 16.8% swinging strike rate is number one among 188 Major League Baseball pitchers who tossed at least 70 innings uh, in 2022. Um, yeah, I mean, again, I believe this is a lefty. Love to have a lefty in the rotation. Would be fantastic. Uh, you know, the shoulder injuries, definitely concerning. It's like, who doesn't have a shoulder injury nowadays? <laughs> it just feels like... That's got to happen. So um, if you miss on Carlos Rodon, I think Andrew Haney would be a nice little uh, safety valve, last resort. Nathan Avaldi, two years, $34 million. Over the past three seasons, he's given the Red Sox 340 innings of 3.79 ERA with a 24, almost 25% strikeout rate, a 4.4% walkout rate, a walk rate, and a 44 five percent ground ball rate um since opening day 2020 there are 149 pitchers who've thrown at least 150 innings as a starter clayton kershaw is the only one who's issued walks at a lower rate than Ivaldi. and uh he did receive a qualifying offer from the red Sox, and the red Sox are gonna i it's believed they're gonna offer him a multi-year deal so odds are probably not gonna be available but if he is That'd be, you know, say, say Bassett walks, sign it somewhere else. Maybe Evaldi is your Bassett replacement. Completely out on Rafael Montero. No, thanks. I, <laughs> I don't know that that's enough. What he's done, I don't know that's enough for me to bring him back and be like, oh, you're changed, man. Come on back. I think he's too, it's too volatile, what, what I've seen out of him. So good luck, Godspeed. Good for you. Like, I'm glad that you're able to, you know, um, bounce back and have a degree of success. This is another interesting one. Jose Quintana, two years, $24 million. Uh, Doesn't work. Now, this is where the hypocritical Neil comes out in full force. Quintana doesn't work, especially deep into games, averaging a hair above five frames per start, which is like right in line with uh, my major gripes about Taiwan Walker and Carlos Carrasco. He also doesn't throw especially hard, um, but only walked less than 7% of opponents. Uh, in a, he had a below average strikeout rate, and he's going to be 34. Aye, aye, aye. Right. So eh, right there, not a great sales pitch, but to me, a, a pretty decent fill in. I, uh, I put him in that kind of Evaldi tier where it's like, you know, if Bassett and Walker go somewhere else and DeGrom goes somewhere else and we're in need of like, we need arms, then it's like, okay, let's just sign Quintana, Evaldi. And do we bring back Michael Waka? Mm. 6% walk rate. They're, they're projecting two years, 16 mil. He induces grounders at a below average rate, doesn't throw hard, prone to home runs, missed time with shoulder troubles, uh, and uh, he has a very high strand rate, which, again, gives me uh, Bassett vibes. You know, I think Bassett, I don't have the numbers to support this, so you can call BS 
from here to kingdom come. Um, but I feel like Bassett also had a high strand rate. Like he would load the bases and then get out of the jam. So I would probably opt towards like, to me, Waka is like the absolute last resort. It's like we missed, we missed on everyone. <laughs> and then it's like, well, let's bring Waka back and see what he can do. Maybe 2020 was just a, an illusion, a fluke. A lot of people saying that we should go after David Robertson, uh, MLBTradeRumors.com in particular. Two years, 16 million. He'll be 38 when the season opens. Uh, he has a very high walk rate, but pretty decent swinging strike rate. Uh, strikeout rate was uh, just shy of his peaks in 2014, 2017. <sighs> We got Diaz as our closer. Robertson could be like the alternate closer when Diaz uh, needs an off day. Uh, Robertson is the, probably the great uh, preeminent setup guy. Uh, the age scares me a little bit. The price tag does not scare me. So again, I don't know that there's, it doesn't look from what I've read, like there's a ton of uh, reliever options that are going to jump out at you. So it's like, you know, I'm not going to get super pissed if they decide to sign Robertson. Again, I know it goes against what I've been saying which is like, I don't want to bring in older, older talent that's like right at the the dusk, the dusk sunset of their career, riding off in the sunset, you know, the golden years. I'm not a huge fan of bringing in multiple players of that age, but I guess it is somewhat win now, right? Somewhat, because like you only have Scherzer for so long. Um, who knows how long you have uh, a few of these other players that we have on like two or three year deals. So it's like, if you want to get it done, I guess Robertson is a relatively inexpensive route to go. I mean, it's like, I know if you listen to a previous episode, you'd say, well, you were out on Verlander who's like put up uh, unbelievable numbers this year, sub two ERA. And, but because he's 30 some odd, eight years old, you don't want to give him, well, yeah, because his contract is going to be prohibitive. Uh, for us making moves elsewhere, I think. And you're only getting it for a year or two. So, um, but I guess the the theory there is like, you only really pursue Verlander if DeGrom is gone. I guess it's a good one-to-one -one replacement. Um, with Robertson, uh, you know, in that bullpen that we have right now, um, I don't hate it. And then, uh, so we're getting into like, so Conforto, we mentioned this before. Conforto feels like a security blanket. They, they MLB Trade Rumors has him going to the Red Sox, Rangers, or Reds on a one year deal one year deal worth fifteen million dollars. And uh, you know, he had that shoulder injury that he sustained during the lockout, which required surgery and wiped out his entire 22, 22 year. Um that feels like if Nimmo goes, Conforto is is gotta be at the top of our list. And if we don't get judged. So I've been saying it's day one. It'd be great to have him back. You know, it'd be great to see him, you know, the any guys that we have from the twenty fifteen season. So I think it's pretty much just DeGrom and Conforto, right? I don't know that we have any other people from that season, but it would be nice to like have them both come back into the mix and, and win that World Series. But we'll see. Adam on a veto. Two years, $14 million. None of the four uh, predictors from MLBTradeRumors.com have them going back to the Mets. Phillies, Braves, Giants, Red Sox. Have fun with the Red Sox. I cannot have you go into the Phillies, Braves, or Giants. <laughs> Um, 2.06 ERA with a resurgent 30.6% strikeout rate, career best 60, 6.2% walk rate, and uh, almost a 52% ground ball rate. Um, uh, best, that's his best rate since 2016. Um, and uh, I, again, I think this is recency bias, just like seeing him struggle so much against the Padres in that wild card game was just like, we got the win, but it was like, you don't have to make it interesting like that, dude. Let's put them away. Let's bury their ace. Um, this is another situation where it's like, is he is he still going to give us another year like that? I just don't think he's going to give us another year like that. Another two years like that. I think you're starting. You you are probably going to see start to see the him decline. But then again, you sign Ottavino and Robertson. Hmm. That piques my interest because it's like. There's no way both of them fail, right? <laughs> no way both of them are busts. So I don't, um, I think that's, that's intriguing. Again, if we don't sign either of those guys, I'm not going to be like, oh man, what the hell? But uh, the, the, the prospect of both of them, I like that more than I do one over the other. I don't know why. Chris Martin, two years, $14 million. Uh, only one of the four predictors had um, him going to the Mets. 
but he's a six foot eight right hander, walked just 2.8% of the 865 batters he's faced, but he will turn 37 next June. So that's like another aging arm which I'm not crazy about. Another news, we hired Jeff Albert as a director of hitting. He was a former Astros and Cardinals coach, spent four years uh, as Houston's minor league hitting coordinator. Um, and then as the assistant hitting coach, two stints with the Cardinals, uh, minor league hitting coach, and then a uh, major league team for four years. I didn't even know there was such a thing as a director of hitting. I don't even know what to think about this. Like, is this an indictment of Eric Chavez? Or is it just like Chavez is like, you know what would be great if we brought this guy in? I don't know. That's just uh, intriguing to me. But I mean, can't, I mean, considering the teams he's worked for, you could do worse. Astros and the Cardinals, two of the best uh, offenses in the league, perennial playoff contenders. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what he brings to the table. And then we'll finish with this the three free agent relievers that are musts for Buck Showalter's bullpen. Number one is, and this is from Rising Apple, a Andrew Sh Chapin. He uh, opted out of his contract for 23. He'll be age 33 for this season. He's a lifetime ERA of 3.23. All right. Okay. I think I like that option better than I do Ottavino or Robertson. And then speaking of Ottavino, that was the number two uh, reliever on this list. He's six and three, 206 ERA over 65 and two thirds innings of work. I mean, yeah, he was great last year, but can I, I again? I don't think it's a must. It's a nice to have, but I mean, given the the market, I don't know. If there's a like a great market for relievers right now in the bullpen. So I don't know if we lose if we lose someone like Ottavino. I don't know that um, you know. There's many uh, guys of that same ilk to replace him. So maybe he is a must. I mean, it's got me thinking now. Got my brain all juiced up. And then this is the this is an interesting one. Michael Fulmer. He was involved in the UNS Cespedes trade where the Mets sent him uh off to the Twins or A's. I think it was the A's. Uh or no, where was Cespedes at the time? Boston? Who did we get Cespedes from? It was the A's or the Red Sox? Might have been the Red Sox. Anyway, he was involved in that trade back in 2015. He won the American League Rookie of the Year in 2016, All-Star in 2017, and then he moved to the bullpen, was traded to the Twins. In 120 plus innings as a reliever, he was nine and ten with a 2.98 ERA. That would be a nice little story. As much as I am against bringing back Montero, I think I'm I'm on board with bringing back Palmer. So that's that, and that's the Mets. Thank you so much for tuning in, for listening, for paying me some attention. I'm attention starved. I am an egomaniac, and your attention fuels me and takes me to the next level. It's what makes me get up in the morning. So what makes me, drives me throughout the day is your attention. All right, Jesus Christ. Thanks so much. Uh, we'll talk to you next week. Adios, muchachos.